Uh, last. Oh, hello everyone, we're back. Um, the last. Last thing I remember was we were talking about. Um. The Simpsons. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I've been watching this show. I just started it. Um. Uh, it's called Tales. Um, no, it's called Mike Judge Presents Tales from the to Tales from the Tour Bus. I know, rolls off the tongue. Um, but um, don't know if you remember, but I was talking about King of the Hill. Um, he's the guy who did that. Uh, King of the Hill. So I'm like, you know, I need, I need more Mike Judge in my life. Um, so, um, it's been really cool. It's been, it's like, um, hard to describe. The majority, the majority of the show is a cartoon, but they interview the friends of so far it's been country music stars um, and then they will uh, give you they'll tell you the story about them and they'll, they'll tell you all these crazy stories of stuff that's happened um, in, in these, these rock star lives and it's been really interesting uh, I'm trying to think of one one of the stories that you guys might like. Um, hmm, give me a moment. Oh yeah, so um, these, these, these guys, um, they're together and they're, they have all sorts of trouble with them. They have guns and drugs and knives and weapons of other, other kinds with them and they didn't want to get caught or something so they decided to, um, to bury it. So they went to, um, they went down the highway, and the highway has mile markers, so you can tell how far you are to your destination. You know, they're, they're all along the road. If you look, there are mile markers every tenth of a mile, I believe. Um, so anyway, they chose a mile marker, and they, uh, they, they buried their, their, uh, their uh, paraphernalia and accessories and such. Um, and um, they ended up forgetting, forgetting where they, <laughs> forgetting where they, they put, they put their stuff. Um, so they just spent a lot of time slowly driving down the highway, stopping at every tenth of a mile. And that, that's just that's just a very benign story. A lot of the stories that you hear are very, uh, you know, crazy. It's a crazy, crazy little show. Um, it's good stuff. You know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be watching, but I might continue. Um, and, uh... It's been renewed for a second season, so um, it's nice to know that there's going to be more of it.
Oh, come on. What was I supposed to do? And I was right at the end. Right at the end. That is malarkey. It's bunk. It's whack. It's not kosher. So I bought something, um, bought something pretty cool, um, you may have seen my review of the NES Grip, what was it called? I think it's just called the NES Grip. Um, anyway, you saw that review, um, I actually bought another NES controller grip. Um, you know, to, obviously there's a need for people who play NES and don't want corners of the controllers digging into their palms. It's very uncomfortable and very common problem. Uh, so this one's neat. And, um, as much as I like the one I bought, um, it's very, uh, it has some, I even mentioned in the video, it has some contours on the back that are not particularly comfortable. I've gotten used to it, but I think a lot of people would mind, and sometimes, even though I have gotten used to it, it still is a problem. Um, so, you know, as much as I would recommend that product, I wanted something maybe a little bit better. So, um, it's cool. It has, uh, handles on it. It's 3D printed. So you can actually download the file yourself. And you can, if you have a 3D printer, you can make one. Um, and the, you know this 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 eBay site, or eBay listing, people sell 3D printed uh, control attachments. Uh, sorry, I'm going so slow with the story. I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, so it seems nice. Um, It's, um, you can, yeah, they offered it in many colors, so I went with the, um, I went with the, I went with the gray that matches, um, that matches the NES. Uh, I haven't, I haven't spent too much time with it yet. Uh, I don't know, gripping story. Um, because I bought, um, I've been playing uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse and Smash Brothers mostly recently, uh, but, um, I bought a 2600, an Atari 2600, and I bought, um, a modded NES controller for 7800, 2600. It's compatible with both. Um, same spot, too. Um, so, you know, that's very, very exciting. Uh, I probably will do a review on it. Um, I've already reviewed the one. I might as well review the other one, right? Um, looks neat. Looks very neat.
Well, I'm sure I was dead there. Oh, that was my fault. Some good tea. I'm drinking, um, I know all the kids are talking about tea, but um, and I'll go over it briefly. I'm, go I'm drinking something called Twinnings. It was um, they first started making it in 1706, uh, I believe, and it's just like it's black tea with I forget the name of the ingredient, like bergamot or something. It's like a citrusy. A lot like this, the flavor of um, Fruit Loops, uh, actually. Um, maybe the same thing, but it is delicious. Um, it's like a real man's tea. Really, really, really good stuff. Really strong. You open up the, you know, the fairly generous size tin of it. Um, and just the, the smell just overwhelms you. It smells very strong. It's great. Oh boy. Hey, I survived. Oh, I never had to tell you guys about that game. Ultimate Chicken Horse. Um, it is so cool. Um, so you, it's a two two player plat or two player, two D platformer. Um, but it, um, you just basically play with other people online. You have to play with other people. And you start out with a blank level. And every turn, each player places a piece to that level. And the more time goes on, you create more and more of the level. And every turn, you have to get to the end of the level. And if you don't, there's basically penalties. Um, really really fun uh, I think of it like Mario Maker but uh, competitive in making it and then of course you play the levels so that's, that adds more fun to it um, it's really cool um, I think it's for it's for switch I know that I know it's for Windows um, I'm not sure what else it's for. It might be for, um, I believe it's for either PlayStation or Xbox or both. Um, so I'd, I'd look it up. Oh, come on. Beginning of the level two? Um, highly, highly, highly recommend that game. Uh, like I said before, I don't play a lot of indie games, but this particular indie game is, uh, really clever. Um, it's like ten times as fun as I'm making it sound. It's really great. Um, and you can also, you know, create custom levels. So you can beforehand create, I usually create simpler levels so that, because that's the blank levels you get are, are simpler levels. And most people, that's not what they do. Most people will create these complex levels. But I don't... I don't know if that's the way I want to do it. I want to make simpler levels that uh, people can add to. So, um... So I've made, I've made a couple cool levels, too. Um, made a um, 
like a mountain level. I called it, you know, it's called, the game's called Ultimate Chicken Horse, so I called it Horse Mountain. Um, so with that level, you basically, you build your parts to climb up the side of the mountain at first, and then there's a decent amount in which you climb yourself to the top. So it's pretty, pretty neat. It's a neat level I made. Um, so that. <coughs> that's that. That's a fun one. So there's there's a lot to do. There's a lot of a lot of characters to unlock. A lot of levels. Excuse me, levels to um. I highly recommend recommend it if you like 2D platformers. Um, you know, eventually, you know, you play enough of it, you're kind of like, eh. But, wait, it's good. It's really good. Like, the levels, the levels, maybe it's because I'm good at video games, but the levels we, we end up making are always like, like every time is a good level. Good job. <laughs> there was a level where, um, uh, it was a moving platform that you had to get on um, to make it across, but then there was a, a giant swinging weight swinging, swinging uh, left to right. So um, you had to, uh, and that was directly over this moving platform that we set up. So what you had to do was you had to both ride the moving platform and jump at the same time, every time this weight came through, so that while it was moving, so you had to very carefully move to the right as well as jump over. It was fun. It was a cool little level. You'll enjoy it, even if you're not winning. It's really just one of those games that's that much fun. Um, the one thing that's very important um, dang, is that you um, you need to make sure you uh, know how to run. You know, just like Mario. You may not be having fun with Mario if you don't know what you're supposed to be holding run the whole time. You know? Uh, the, one, the one unspoken rule of Mario is you're supposed to hold 2D Mario, of course. You're supposed to hold run all the time. Um, that's just how it's designed. But, you see a fair number of Ultimate Chicken Horse players that don't know how to run. Which is okay until you're on a level that we've, that we've all made where you can't make the jump because you're not running. And you just keep failing and failing. So make sure to um, make sure you know how to run. You know, run is just either hold the button or <coughs> or hold the trigger, whichever you prefer. Why did I die? Alright, well I'm going to try to beat this level. Um, yeah, get something accomplished here. Give it a bunch of tries, but then uh, I gotta cut this one off. It is time. I wonder what the end of this game is going to have for us, you know? Is it just going to be over? Like, congratulations, you beat it. Uh oh. 
Oh, sure, I was dead. I'm almost at the end. there. Oh, that is just garbage. What am I supposed to do? How? Alright, that level, the end of that level, I know I've gotten through it. It's like spots like that before. It's stupid. There's too many of them in a row. I'm only going to get all of them if I get lucky. So, I'm quitting for now. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will see you all real soon. Bye now.